Hello and welcome back to Farm Home Order of the Crimson Arm 100% Growth's low turn count playthrough. In this video, we'll tackle Chapter 20X, which is basically the battle preparations of this game. We get 40,000 gold, which is actually doubled uh, if you reload a save after doing this map, uh, after doing this map, you get an extra 40,000 gold every time. I didn't know that when I was initially recording this. Um, so, in return, I will not dip below 40,000 gold, even though it shouldn't matter. Uh, just out of courtesy, because I don't want to exploit a glitch to get things I shouldn't have naturally. I bought a lot of things here that I thought could have been helpful. There were only a few things that turned out that ended up mattering. The short spears I buy matter. The killer weapons I buy sort of matter. I bought a lot of sword reavers and axe reavers for weapon experience. I bought a few lance reavers for sword experience. And I bought a few silver lances just because they're solid weapons to poke things with. If I ever do dip below 40,000 gold, I easily could have just sold something else to make up for it. The main thing that you want to focus on in this map is the arena. There's not much to talk about in this chapter because most of it is just... Uh, Celia going through the arena. Which is kind of boring. Most of the map is just Celia in the arena, although there are some points in the uh, map where... Boleslav gets to go into the arena, and some other units. What I should have done was put Clara through the arena. She actually cares about the experience that she gets. The silver sword I buy there is never used. I buy a few killing edges and a couple lance reavers. I'm finally able to buy longbows again, which is nice. I picked up a few iron longbows and I believe one steel longbow. Honestly, I buy so many things in this chapter that you should just not care about what I buy. If you see me with a new weapon in my inventory, assume that I just bought it here. Because most of this map is going to be simply arena-based, I'm able to talk about what comes next in the run. After this map is a, is a map that is effectively a defend map, the boss shows up on turn 10 and it's a defeat boss map. Alternatively, we can wait out a turn limit. But because this is an LTC, we need to defeat the boss. Because he shows up on turn 10, we get a free 10 turns of grinding. After that is the last map where we need to hit super hard stat benchmarks on our units, aside from endgame. We mainly use the next two maps to grind up uh, stats on units like August and weapon ranks. We still want Sven to hit S rank axes, and we want... Uh, We want August to cap out some of her stats. After that is a map that is pretty easy. It's a map that will be comboed with another map. And then there are two maps left. In all honesty, I should combo the last three maps into one video. We need to start worrying about Wayland's sword experience a lot, because he needs to hit S-rank swords, not for accuracy purposes, but because the S-rank sword is po more powerful than his legendary weapon. It has two more might, and because he can't double even with his legendary weapon, the two more might per hit does matter when you're facing a boss with as much with as big stats as the final boss has. In Celia's grinding in the arena, we don't really care if she gets weapon experience or combat experience. She's going to get a lot of time to get him next map. So we just put her into fights that she can win. Which is most of them, considering most of her stats are capped. There are a few funny happenings in the arena, though. Because of how class slots work, some classes are put on uh, onto classes that you would normally not have access to, such as a class we'll see later, leading to a pretty funny situation in the arena. Celia could now technically stop doing the arena, 
I thought I wasn't sure exactly I was going to tackle the final boss at this point, so I figured I might as well cap all of her stats. She never ends up fighting the final boss. She ends up killing an enemy near the final boss, which she could have done with the stat she has now. We'd prefer it if she gets weapon experience and combat experience at the same time, because it's less grinding we have to do with her in the future. As you have already seen, though, that's not exactly uh, a huge bother. If we had Brendan instead of Celia, we would have lost turns several points throughout this, uh, throughout this map. Throughout this game, rather. However, she would not actually save any turns in the endgame. Which is kind of sad, actually. I apologize if you can hear my cat snoring in the background. Celia was trained exclusively for Chapter 19, and then for just utility afterwards. However, as a high stat flunky with access to 2 to 3 range, she's a very good utility. Admittedly, what I should have been doing in this map was building up the support between Clara and Algamus. It was never going to get to super high levels, but it would have been nice to have. This is what I mean. I don't know what class slot the Great Knight takes over, but you shouldn't be able to fight a one-range enemy in the arena. Delia has now capped every stat except luck and HP. By the end of the game, she has capped every stat except HP. She's not our highest level unit throughout the entire run, though. Yelena is now one off of capping most of her stats, which is really nice. We're putting alchemists into the arena, and you may wonder why. Well, there's actually a boss one uh, in a map that's coming up where we want alchemists to have really good stats. He's the only unit capable of one running the boss. We also want him to hit S rank lances for that fight. So we grind up his stats a little bit. We also throw Sven in here because we still need him to get his axe rank to S. He also hasn't quite capped his stats yet. Sven's caps are sadly pretty low. However, because he has access to axes, he can benefit from using their higher power. We never pick up the S rank axe, which is unfortunate because we would have liked to use it. It would have made the final boss kill a lot easier. Instead, though, we bought a silver axe for him to use for that purpose. This is when I realized I should probably run Boleslaw through the arena a bit. And I admitted they should have put Nagu through there too. She has a harder time reaching these stat benchmarks that we would like her to have. Maybe wondering why I'm having Elaine still heal a little bit? I wasn't quite sure how high her stats needed to be, I wasn't sure if she needed capped speed. And I wasn't quite sure if she had hit A rank stabs yet. Plus, I needed Algamist to go to the arena again. We actually need her to hit A-Rank staves. There's no warp or rescue, but there's still an A-Rank staff we need to use. We used it before in this channel, so you might be able to tell what it is. These level 8 enemies that Algamus is fighting is nice, even though we would have preferred him to not quit. That fight probably would have been lost if he didn't. These fights give him a decent amount of experience. He absolutely needs capped strength, and capped skill and speed are nice to have, because they make the chapter where they make chapters where he needs to be dropped in a hordes of enemies a lot easier. Boloslav is a pretty easy time in the arena. 
I was more concerned about getting him access to better stats than I was getting him weapon rank, because he's been around for most of the game. I was pretty sure that he'd be able to hit S-rank bows pretty easily, and I was right. He doesn't cap his stats in this map or in the next map. However, there is a map where we don't really care about the movement of a boss killer, and so we're able to use Boleslav to pick off the boss. He's now one of his skill cap and his speed cap. Just for the hell of it, I ended up putting Wayland into the arena. Where are we? Hang on one second. Yes, sorry about that. We don't actually put Wayland into the arena. Megu actually does go into the arena. I completely forgot that when I was recording it. The Swordmaster would have doubled Wayland because Wayland has higher stats than Megu, so the Swordmaster would have rolled higher stats. I didn't feel like burning just for an arena fight. And this also gets Negu a level up. She's now capped all of her relevant stats, aside from Rez. get one Memendius in with Elaine. I forget if this actually was in the recording that actually went through. And then we end the, and then we end the map. We have access to Derwin, which is the personal weapon of Clara, which is a rapier tome that grants plus three luck. And we move on to the next big grind chapter. I'll see you next time for chapter 21. Have a nice day.